Earlier today on the House floor, after Kevin McCarthy announced the impeachment inquiry would begin, Congressman Matt Gates curiously seemed unsatisfied. He said this. Mr. Speaker, dust off our written January agreement. You have a copy. Reflect on the spirit of that agreement and build on the start that we had moments ago. Begin to comply. No continuing resolutions, individual spending bills or bust, votes on balanced budgets and term limits, subpoenas for Hunter Biden and the members of the Biden family who've been grifting off of this country, and the impeachment for Joe Biden that he so richly deserves. Do these things or face a motion to vacate the chair. Congressman Gates joins me now. Sir, it's good to have you on. I, that speech took me by surprise. I mean, it, it felt like you were getting something that you wanted out of McCarthy. We know he was resistant, I think, initially about impeachment. He, he did kind of what uh, a lot of good Republicans wanted. Why were you angry today? Uh, why is it that Kevin McCarthy only seems to do the right thing when he has a political gun to his head? And even after he makes promises, he don't, doesn't always fulfill them. I remember back in January of this year, Rob, when McCarthy promised that if he could just get the speaker gavel, there would be an impeachment of Alejandro Mayorkas. And that never came to bear. So the pattern recognition here is Kevin McCarthy fails to deliver on his promises. Then he gaslights the prospects of an impeachment. But I would ask you this. What's really changed today? Did we send out subpoenas to Hunter Biden? Did we schedule dates to bring these folks in to answer our questions? Was there a new round of document requests? No, all they did was rebrand what was already occurring. And frankly, what was already occurring was not sufficiently rigorous to get to the bottom of this and to ensure that there's fulsome accountability. So, I mean, it's it's interesting. I mean, I, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, do you think you're being a little bit too hard on him? I mean, it's he's trying to balance, right? I mean, he's, he's got this this tough job where, you know, he's got to kind of balance well, the here, wants of everyone. Here's a way to make the job easier. Go ahead. Don't say that you're going to do stuff that you're not going to do. Kevin McCarthy said in January we'd have a vote on term limits. We haven't. He said yeah. we'd have a vote on a balanced budget. It hasn't occurred. He said there would be individual spending bills, and that has not existed on a pace to meet the deadline of government funding running out. So maybe like in Washington, everyone's used to making commitments that they never fulfill, but <laughs> that's so. not going to be the business I'm in. He's either going to fulfill the commitments or we're going to use every enforcement tool in the book. And, you know, it, it was not uh, all that surprising to me that after I put out notice that I'd be giving remarks at noon, he had this sort of, you know, rushed and rattled uh, 11 uh -huh. o'clock announcement. Uh, but the work ahead remains. Don't judge us by our press conferences and our tweets. Judge us on whether or not we actually get these people before the Congress to answer questions. And I'm chomping at the bit to ask them. Holding the feet to the fire. Matt Gates, Congressman, good to have you on. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Rob.